Whenever we talk about the famous reusable launch vehicles in the aerospace industry, perhaps we'll often immediately mention SpaceX's Falcon 9 or Falcon Heavy, with impressive landing and reuse processes on landing pads and drone ships. To date, these systems are no stranger to us, as SpaceX has used them continuously in their missions. Based on the success with Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy, the reuse and landing system continue to be focused on development within the Starship project. However, SpaceX surprised us with a completely new system, the Mechazilla Catching System. Most of us have seen how this system works in SpaceX's 3D simulation videos. But does it really work that well in practice? Honestly, this system still has a lot of problems and difficulties, much more than we can imagine. Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Of course, any system will have its downsides and problems. And for a new system like the Mechazilla Catching System, that's no exception. The problems that can be mentioned here are the mass, thrust, and speed of the vehicle, as well as the accuracy and reliability of the system. Mass is one of the disadvantages of the Starship compared to previous vehicles. The empty mass of Starship is 200 tons with booster and 100 tons with Starship, respectively. During landing, their real mass will probably be slightly larger than empty mass because it still contains some fuel to serve the vehicle's deceleration. However, compared to older vehicles like the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy, this mass is still much larger. Specifically, the empty mass of each booster in Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy will reach between 22 and 25 tons, which is only a quarter of Starship and an eighth of Super Heavy. Obviously, it's a challenge for Mechazilla Arm to catch or hold such a massive object. The next problem is the engine's thrust and pressure. Each Raptor 2 engine that Starship's using will generate 2.3 mn. This number is much larger than the 845 kn thrust of the Merlin 1D engine that the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy are using. Even though only a few engines were active during landing, their thrusts and pressures may also affect the catching process in some unfortunate cases because the arm's just a component that was installed on a different structure rather than a fixed structure to the ground such as landing pads. Falling speed's also a factor to consider. A large and heavy object will certainly fall quickly, even if it's been decelerated by the engine's thrust. But when flying in the Earth's atmosphere, we must never underestimate the effects of gravity. We also need to think about the worst case scenario, which is when the engines have problems leading up to it so it can't work properly to help boost or decelerate. It'd definitely be a disaster. At that time, we'll be faced with a huge metal block weighing one to 200 tons free falling from the sky and what we have to do is then catch it with our hands. That's impossible. Not only Mechazilla Arm, but certainly no other structure or system can do this. Not only will that metal block crush any structure in the area it lands in, but it'll also have some flammable substance inside it that's ready to ignite and create an explosion that spreads around. Accuracy is also one of the challenges with a Mechazilla system. When Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy boosters return to launching pad, they'll have a relatively large space to land. Or with drone ships, they can move to any location to pick up and allow the booster to land. That means these systems won't be too limited in operational space. But with Starship, it'll require an accurate navigation system because the Mechazilla arm's fixed on the launch tower, so boosters or Starships must fly within the range that this arm can operate. To describe the difficulty of this task, Elon posted a tweet with a video that compares catching vehicles with a Mechazilla arm to catching a fly with a pair of chopsticks. That's right, a fly with a pair of chopsticks. This requires extreme precision. Through this interesting comparison, we can understand that the vehicles and the Mechazilla arm have to combine extremely smoothly and accurately to achieve a successful landing. And the last problem with this system is that it's never been implemented in practice so we can't say it was completed as well as guarantee it'll work well within the next landing missions. With a tight launch schedule for Falcon 9, SpaceX can easily detect, repair, and upgrade the landing and reuse systems. However, because Starship's a new project, it doesn't have a regular and stable launch schedule like Falcon 9. Since the Mechazilla catching system is installed, only the S-24 and B-7 launch has taken place. Unfortunately, this didn't happen completely, so we didn't have a chance to see the system in action. That means risks can happen on the next mission when it trains to land within this new system. Due to the above factors, it's clear that the landing by catching method with the Mechazilla system is a risky decision. Any small mistake can lead to huge losses. A giant block of metal with flammable fuel inside can explode or fall from a height of at least about 150 meters that would look like a big bang explosion, and it could spread and damage not only the system, but also other infrastructures at launch site, star base, and even the Boca Chica area. 
So what's this mean? Well, this would be a waste of time and money. That'll make Musk and SpaceX spend a long time repairing the damage and rebuilding their systems and infrastructure. It'll also lead to all plans and schedules being canceled after the explosion and take a long time to ever restart them. In addition, SpaceX will also be responsible for the remediation of environmental consequences if they affect the lives of people or the habitat of animals. This will certainly cost SpaceX a large amount of money, plus time. But to achieve miracles, SpaceX is willing to take the risks. And this system certainly has some benefits for SpaceX to choose it for an important project like Starship. Let's see. With arms that can hold and lift up and down vehicles, it'll be much more convenient than previous launching methods. For example, it won't need other cranes to lift and move the vehicles to other places for recovery like the landing pad system. It also doesn't need a ship to salvage like the landing at sea or using a ship to carry vehicles over long distances to recovery places like a drone ship. Instead, it can help the vehicle immediately be repaired, recover and refuel on OLM and be ready for the next flight in about an hour. In addition, it'll help Starship optimize mass because Mechazilla and OLM arms help to hold and stabilize Booster and Starship so it doesn't need landing legs. As a result, Starship can reduce a significant part of the mass, which is considered an enemy of vehicles when launching into space, as well as increase the payload for the cargo it carries. In interplanetary missions, an extra pound or kilogram of cargo would be extremely valuable. That's the end? No, not yet. The above benefits are only short-term benefits. This Mechazilla system has many other long-term benefits as well. So, a new record will definitely be created. SpaceX will become the company that can launch and recover the biggest and most powerful rocket in the world. That record will probably take a lot of time for other aerospace companies to reach. For SpaceX, with a system that can partly or fully reuse the vehicle, they can save lots of costs, which will be important for a project that requires a large investment like the Starship. Therefore, Elon and SpaceX will now be able to focus more on getting Starship into orbit, approaching, landing, and colonizing other celestial bodies in space. But to achieve this goal, Elon and SpaceX will need to test and improve their Mechazilla system. These works will certainly continue to be accelerated by SpaceX soon, so they can immediately use this system for their next mission with S-25 and B-9, which is likely to launch at the end of this year. As for us SpaceX fans, we certainly don't want to watch these rocket launches or catching processes in 3D simulation videos like we do now. Let's wait and see if Elon and SpaceX can actually turn those 3D plans into live-action versions. If that turns out to be true, we could begin to count down to the day when humans will set our first footprints on Mars. And that's it for today's episode. We do hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments below because your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.